Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I have Dr. Chris Bromley here and we're going to be talking a little bit about practice management. This is our lunch hour practice management chat. So Chris, thanks for joining. My pleasure. Thanks for having me back. Hey, so uh, let's talk today about now we're coming out of COVID and you had some great ideas of how to kind of re-engage some of your patients that are producing great results. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing with your diabetic shoes, your orthotics and regenerative medicine. Well, again, those are great questions. Most of our patients have been home during the COVID crisis, and we thought as a practice, we'd like to reach out to those patients. So in the podiatry practice, we do a lot of sports medicine. A lot of our patients um, have orthotics. So the first thing we did is we came up with a campaign where we reached out the email to our patients to see how they were feeling, tell them that we missed them, how are their orthotics doing, and if they weren't comfortable coming in, we offered them some telehealth visits. The second group that we were concerned about was our diabetics, because our diabetics are really at risk for foot infections and ulcerations, and overall, their complications can get quite severe. And because they were at the risk group, we, off we reached out to them and we offered them telehealth visits to check in with us to make sure their feet were doing well. And we also offered them uh, an update and evaluation of their diabetic shoes. Most diabetics, are, if they have Medicare, can get diabetic shoe gear every year. So we reached out if they were due and offered that they could come in and get measured when they were comfortable. And that was really helpful for them. And it gave my staff something to keep busy. And then yeah. we look forward to getting them in because that's something that we feel really passionately about. Chris, let's, let's simplify and bring it down. You just said something, you sent something out to your patients and it, and, and that, that might be a little high level. How do we bring it down in terms of how do you send out a message to all your patients that have orthotics or all your patients that have diabetics? Do you do a blanket or do you do it based on diagnosis? How do you do that or who does that for you? So in our office, what we typically do is we run a report through our electronic health record that would, that would bring the CPT code that correlates with orthotics. So that will identify your patient base who has orthotics from your practice. Then you could also do it for patients who might have a diagnosis like heel pain or plantar fasciitis who, and then you could compare those lists. And from that, we created an email blast that would reach out to the patients and remind them that we're here. You may be due for new orthotics or due for a checkup, or you may have never had them and you might, you might have thought about it, but didn't do it, but then you want to reconsider it. And that's the same way with the, the diabetics. We do something similar with uh, vascular testing as well, similar to diabetic shoes, but vascular testing, if they haven't had it in a year, we have a, a little blast that goes out. Cool. Uh, let, let's go on and talk about uh, your, your use of uh, regenerative medicine and, and how that's working for you. So the, the backstory with that is about 20 years ago, one of my best friends in the whole world, Dr. Caroline Malizia, convinced me that most of what I learned about medicine was probably wrong. And that she was the holistic, naturopath, chiropractor, world-renowned, whole food nutrition. So she basically taught me all the things that I never learned in medical school about how important nutrition was, about whole food supplementation versus terrible vitamins that they sell over the counter, and about how important um, your overall lifestyle was to your health. So she was the inspiration for me. And I, because I was living that lifestyle, I incorporated that into my practice and sort of walked away or backed away from that typical, you need a prescription for a Motrin or a Aleve or a Naproxen or Celebrex, because those drugs are really suppressing your body's ability to heal. So that was the inspiration. And then as things moved forward, I walked back from cortisone injections, which we were taught in medical school. You know, everybody that has a pain or something hurts, you offer them the drug and then you offer them a shot. And if that doesn't work, you offer them surgery. Well, if we look at those disease processes, they're the, your body trying to heal yourself. And the worst thing you could give them is a drug to suppress their healing, an injection to make their healing stop or get worse. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we've developed with the use of the allograph. So moms that are part of a donor program, moms that are gonna have babies donate their placentas and their fetal tissue or fluid, in a, in a very safe, well-studied, tested way. And we've been using those allografts in medicine. They started in burn units, you know, 70 years ago, and then they use it in ophthalmology or eye surgery or oral surgery. And in, and in podiatry, in sports medicine, we've been using those grafts and wounds mostly yeah. 
in my regenerative practice, we use them to, if we've got a torn tendon or a ligament or an area where, where there's been an injury, we can use those injectable allografts to use that stem cell growth factor regenerative approach to getting patients to heal. And then we pair that with whole food nutrition, lifestyle changes, and things that they could be doing at home to help their bodies heal as opposed to just giving them a prescription for a drug and hoping for the best. That, that's awesome. So let's specifically, we talked a little bit about, you usually do a kind of a package and this is more for practice management. So you're doing a package for orthotics with the amnio together, correct? That's working correct. well for you? Right. So if you came in, typical heel pain patient presents um, with pain in their heel. And if you do an ultrasound, you can see that there's a, a tear or a separation in that fashion. That's, that's not supposed to be there. So we usually show them on the ultrasound and we explain, okay, here's how you got here. You know, you didn't stretch, you had terrible shoes, you were on your feet, bare feet, or whatever you did to it, we have to stop that. Mm -hmm. And then we say, okay, one of the things that we need to do is start the healing process over again. So we can show you on the ultrasound where the fascia is damaged, and then we can inject the allograft, the regenerative medicine into that with a local anesthetic, start that healing process over, combined with the better shoes, custom orthotics, home-based PT, activity modification. So all those things, it's like a great chocolate chip cookie recipe, right? So the chip in the cookie for me is the allograft and, and be able to put that together. Yeah, that and 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 that and they and they just appreciate having that all together. I know we were talking a little bit about um, you do some ten jet as well. Where does the ten jet for Achilles or plantar fascia fall in? Do you try this first if that fails? Do you do that? Uh, what's the time sequence? So the ten jet is a an instrument that I have experience with. I have a little bit more experience with ten x, which is basically sorry, yeah. it, it's a percutaneous handheld device we do in the outpatient surgery. Basically, when you have someone that's failed conservative care, you did the regenerative or orthotic, and they have an injury to a tendon or a fascia, you need to go in and clean out that damaged area and start the healing cascade away, much the way we do on a wound. If a wound has mm -hmm. an SCAR or necrosis, we need to remove that to stimulate healing. So the TenJet and TenX are used to debride that area. When you debride that area, it will start to, uh, to heal and, and move forward in a much rapid way and you get a good quality heal out of that, meaning that it's gonna repair itself. Yeah. Um, we, we also talked a little bit about uh, using uh, balance braces and care picks, some, some interesting new treatments. Which one of those do you wanna talk about first? Uh, let's talk about balance brace since we're still on the, on the medicine side. So balance is one of the falls are one of the number one, um, concerns to the, to the patients as they get older, because obviously falls result in, in serious injuries and our real problem with it, with our population as our population is getting older. So as part of Medicare, there are balance braces or that are included in their benefits. So if you have somebody, if you start asking patients, if they've fallen, which is what we're supposed to do when they come in, or we do a questionnaire in our waiting room that talks about PAD and their you know, fungal and you know, all the different, so balance is on there. So when patients say they've fallen and you start to investigate that, you, they'll say things to you like, well, you know, I'm afraid to go in my own yard because I'm afraid I'm gonna fall. And, if, and what we do with balance braces is we, we take some measurements, we don't have to cast, and we can make a balance brace for them that they can wear. And it really gives them a sense of confidence. They're not, gonna, they're not gonna fall. They can give up the walker, maybe the cane. And it, it's really a life-changing event for them. So what we did as part of our practice management is we spoke to our primary care colleagues, our partners in primary care, and they, we educated them. We gave them some flyers. And then we sent out um, email blasts to patients who are in the demographic that we would consider at risk. And we talked to them about, we gave them the statistics. What are this? How many, how often does somebody fall? How often does that result in? And if you've had a fall or you're worried about a fall, please reach out to us um, so that we can help you with that. Yeah, Chris, what I, what I enjoy with what you do is I, I think a lot of times if we relegate to doing what we remember we're in the treatment room, we're very limited and overwhelmed with the 10 or 20 minutes mm -hmm. by taking it outside that by talking to the primaries and sending an email to the patients, it, it kind of drives specifically that, that treatment. I don't know about you, but a lot of times I have 20 minutes or 10 minutes. And if I thought of everything, I wouldn't think of anything. 
and whereas if you if they come in asking for like the the balance braces the way i kind of think about it if i see someone using a cane or a walker i ask them i don't know how you could buy this my biggest challenge i have two challenges with balance braces one is appropriate shoe gear which which if you're doing diabetic shoes a lot of them can benefit from that and the second challenge i find is getting them to comply to wearing them that those are great um points and i think the what what we're doing in the practice is is helping the provider, you know, address things that we may not have thought of. I mean, one of my own patients had a fifth met fracture a year ago, six months ago, other foot, same thing. And even though I'm, you know, I, I consider myself a pretty bright guy, I never interviewed that patient about balance. And it wasn't until I started working on the balance brace. And I said, well, listen, you've had these two injuries. Tell me about how your balance is. And she said to me, quote, I'm afraid to go for a walk in my own yard because I'm afraid I'm going to fall and fracture something else. And I was like, wow, this is a woman who's not that old. She's an English teacher, 60 years old, not morbidly obese. And I was missing it because I didn't ask. Mm -hmm. So we added the balance brace question to the questionnaires that patients fill out nice. uh, in the, in the pre-op when they're in the waiting room. And then the MAs in my, in my office are trained with, to see that and to make sure that I address it. If we have the situation, like you pointed out, like I really only have 10 or 20 minutes and the patient's here for something that we were already doing. And what we do is I say to them, listen, I've, we've, we found something that's really a concern for me. I'd like to give you some information about balance bracing. And I'd like to have you come back and see me next week where we're going to make some measurements and take the time to get you what you need. And the, and the, and the typical response is, well, thank you very much. No problem coming back. Um, because we really want to do the best job we can for every yeah. patient. Any problem with getting them to wear the balance brace in your opinion? Well, in the old days, yes. In the old days, the balance braces were very bulky and they made shoe fit very difficult. So we typically say to the patient, when you come in for the balance brace fitting, I'd like you to bring in any and all of your laced shoe Perfect. options. Great. And bring them in. You and I will fit the balance brace. The balance brace typically has an open heel. So it sits down into the shoe quite well. Uh, we do a lot of orthotics, a lot of other DME here. So we're pretty familiar with, um, and I can get a balance brace that we use in any sneaker that laces, no problem whatsoever. And then we explain the break in at home, explain that I'm going to ask you to break it in gradually. I'm going to see you back in four weeks. I'm going to be looking at your feet to see if there's any wear and tear. Loving I'm going to be looking at the brace to make sure that the brace is breaking in. So if you're not wearing it, I'm gonna know. And they go, okay. So, we, so that's a good point. Yeah. And, and to, to simplify for those that are watching, all, all a balance place are, they're bilateral AFOs. That's what you're billing. The, the code right. is bilateral AFOs for balance or for arthritis or for whatever you're doing it for. Just to right, so an, an AFO means ankle foot orthosis. So basically it's, a, it's an all encompassing device that goes around the foot comes up behind the ankle, secures above the ankle, and that really secures the patient balance, you know, foot to leg. Yeah. Well, while we're talking, just a quick tip. We were, we were talking a little bit before about, uh, let's say, frontal plane motion injuries, peroneals, posterior tibial, even plantar fasciitis, something that I've, I've found, a lot of my patients, they may not want to go into a cam boot or a walking boot. So what I have is I have like a, um, an AFO, one of these over-the-counter ones, a velocity or something like that. Mm -hmm. And for patients that don't want to go into the, the boot, I'll put them in that for a lot of those frontal plane injuries. And so I kind of explain, this got injured by going side to side. This is going to only allow the sagittal plane motion. Why don't we get you in this? And that does just as well as, as a walking boot for most of them. You're absolutely right. And, and I, I'm doing the same thing unconsciously as you in the sense that I use uh, Bragg um, CTS. So Bragg is a, is a, is a AFO with a, a hinge mm -hmm. and it's got a lower and upper and you can kind of take it apart and it builds that same L code. Um, and I've gone to using that, you know, I got away from some of the non-articulated ankle braces that I had for my ankle injuries. And I basically use that really nice Bragg CTS system probably 99% of the time now. And I think you're right for, you know, patients that are, you know, the elderly or heavy that have the posterior tibial medial or the lateral perineal, I think it works fantastic. Yeah. It, so in conjunction, so everyone's getting something like that. that that's a, and, they, and they appreciate it. They're like, wow, this is because they don't want to wear the big boot. Because I say, otherwise, you're going to have to wear this. That's what I, all I had in the past was you're in a lot of pain. You know, if we're doing some treatment, you have to be in the walking boot. Well, so many people don't like, you know, even if I use the even up for the other side, that's a great tip. So many doctors don't have the. True. To put it in the other shoe, but uh, that works great.
Yeah, most cool. people, I mean, a, a, an ankle boot is a is a good short-term device, but you're right. Most people end up with back pain and hip pain because they're trying to get around in the boot, and um, it doesn't, it, yeah. do you guys the use, the, use a more progressive device. Yeah, do you use the even-ups to, to yeah. equalize? Yeah. Yeah, I tell them, look, you have to have a shoe that's this thick. You don't have a shoe that's that thick. You get the even-up, you get it at the front desk on your way out. Yeah. Uh, good. I, I think we gave some great, great ideas this week. Uh, let's, let's talk about care picks as we finish up. So tell, tell, tell us a little bit about that. Right. So, uh, um, when one of the things that came out of COVID is we were really needed to reach out to patients via telehealth, those virtual visits, just like you and I are talking. So care picks is the company that, that started an app in 2016. They were doing a lot of wound care, uh, in the home with wound backs. And one of the problems with communicating with the home health agency that we're also seeing the patients was there was really no good way to get images that could be measured from the wound at the home to the practice. So CarePix is an app that has an, uh, one particular application where physician can communicate with the patient at home in a HIPAA compliant way. The patient will send a picture with a coin or a green dot, and that gives you the measurement. So you'll use planimetry, which is when you draw on a picture where you can get the measurements. That creates a picture of the wound with a report that you can incorporate into your EMR. You can send that. I can send it to you as if you and I were consulting on the case. I can send it to the home health company. I can send it to the primary. And every time you do that within CarePix, you get reimbursed for that. So the CarePix made the whole telehealth thing more successful for us as far as communication and compliance because there are codes that you do for the virtual check-in. There are codes that are payable for the imagery and the reporting. Uh, there are codes for physician to physician communication and physician to patient. So one of the things I made the mistake of was giving my cell phone or having pictures of patients wounds I've been, I've been guilty. on my phone. Okay. That is a, that is a HIPAA violation. We're not supposed to have anything that's not HIPAA privacy safe on our device. So, and even today, the surgery patients that I would have, that I saw this morning, they would have got my cell phone, could have sent me a picture or text message, which is about, so now my surgery patients, as well as my wound patients at home, uh, any of the patients I need, all communicate with me via CarePix because there's an alert. It's a HIPAA safe way. I don't have to worry about missing a call on my cell phone on a Saturday because you know, it's, I think it's some tele, telemarketer, could be a patient, where, because they're, they're communicating with me in a way that's HIPAA, that it's trackable. We get a report every week from CarePix, who communicated with you, what images did you get, what reports did you want to generate, what telehealth visits you did, and that can go to my billing staff. Um, so tele, CarePix is really the state of the art in the telehealth business from a provider perspective. Yeah. Does it sync with your EMR? Like, do you have to redocument twice? Yes and no. So there are EMRs where it can be, you can link the care picks, you know, so that it comes into your, from a report perspective, mm -hmm. it can come in. Typically what I'm doing with care picks is after I have a care picks console, I get a, a recording of the call, a voice recording, and I get the images. So I'm well here and I'll dictate into my EMR the note. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not here, I'm uh, on the weekend, I'm home, I have that recording I can review when I get to the office on Monday, which is really nice. I will have gotten the image with the planimetry report into CarePix. And that CarePix image with the report can be can be triaged or forwarded to my EMR, just like any other um, report that you get from an outside service. Cool, Chris. I, th I think that's, I th those are great tips. I'll, I'll put all the links to everything we talked about today, uh, some of the braces we recommended, CarePix, uh, all these um, amnios that we're using. It'll all be on the bottom of this video for anyone that's interested. And uh, thank you for your time today. I think it was great. My pleasure. Hey guys, thank you for watching Healthy Living. You're going to find a few links here I'd like you to click. One is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also, you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.